In previous videos, we looked at how microorganisms such as viruses and bacteria can negatively affect animals causing diseases. And now we're going to look at certain parasites. So there are your larger organisms that can negatively affect an animal. So parasites mainly are any um, insect or plant, even plants can be, usually plants are parasites on other plants. But there are these organisms that live on another organism, usually called a host, and then they steal nutrients from the host. So basically a parasite does not kill the host animal. That's usually not the point. If there is maybe a parasite infestation, sure the host can eventually die because there are too many of them at once stealing nutrients from the animal, so then they can't survive. But generally only one or two or a couple of these parasites live on or inside the animal because they want the animal to stay alive, the host. Otherwise, they don't have a food source anymore. So usually your parasites are classified as either internal or external parasites. Internal also known as endoparasites. So endo means inside, ecto is for outside parasites. So usually your endoparasites are usually things like worms and they live literally inside the animal, so in the intestines um, or any of the other organs inside the animal. And they live there for good safe habitat and usually for food. So a couple of internal parasites, usually on worm format, you have roundworms, whipworm, hookworm and tapeworm. So we're going to look at the roundworms and tapeworms as examples. And for external, ex external parasites or ectoparasites, they usually live outside on the skin of the animal and they suck the blood of the host. And here are a couple of examples. They would be like your fleas. Yeah, all of these are so pretty. The fleas and the lice and ticks. So they live literally on the skin and they have specialized mouth parts that they attach themselves to the, the skin of the animal and then they suck the blood from the animal. Sometimes these ectoparasites or endoparasites can secrete toxins and the per purpose of these toxins is mainly so that the um, host does not realize that a, a parasite is actually inside or outside of this animal. So it kind of like, um, Oh, that's the right word. It suppresses the pain or it dulls the pain that the animal might experience as these parasites are um, hurting actually the animal or biting into their skin. So that way they can drink or steal nutrients for longer. So parasites usually do not cause the death of the host because if they were to kill the host animal, they would be... Um, rid of a source of nutrients. So they want the host to stay alive. In some cases, the animal can maybe die, but usually this happens from a parasite infestation. So if there is hundreds of these individuals on them that steals their nutrients at the same time, then obviously the host will not be able to survive. But generally, the purpose of the parasite is to keep the host alive. And also, it can cause animal and production losses, mainly if the animal dies and even if the host does stay alive, sometimes they can either produce less wool or milk or meat in that case when they lose weight and so on, when they are negatively affected by these parasites. Generally, it's not a good idea for farmers to allow these parasites to actually stay alive um, in, inside or outside of the animal. So the first one we can look at is internal parasites. This video is all about that. And the first one are roundworms. They're sometimes referred to as nematodes. So, but, we, but you guys could just remember the, the term roundworms. So here are a couple of nasty pictures showing what the roundworms look like on the inside of the animals. So this picture shows where the animal has, the carcass has been dissected and we can see these worms uh, in one of the organs of the animal. And some gastric juices we can assume is probably either the intestines or in the stomach because as you can see the juices. And this is a nice close-up of what these roundworms look like. And here are two very nasty pictures of what they look like on the intest inside the intestines of animals. So you can see there's usually more than one of these worms at the same time inside these animals. So what you guys have to remember is the life cycle of these parasites that we're going to do. So here's one, a general one of a nematode or a roundworm. So they will give you guys variations of this life cycle. So it won't be exactly this, but generally they look the same. So there's either going to be like something like a sheep or a cow, um, which is your host animal. Then you've got your worm on the inside. Usually what happens is the adult worm is inside the organism, the host. And then the host will eventually, um, in the feces, poop out any eggs that the adult lays. So the eggs pass out through the feces, it goes onto the soil. 
eventually these eggs they um, hatch and then you have these larvae coming out so this is the young stage or the i want to say the teenager stage of this roundworm so the larvae then eventually develop first stage stage second stage they just um, evolve or become a little bit older but just remember eggs larvae and then eventually they become adults and what the adults then do is usually they're on the grass that your host animal would want to graze and then your host will ingest this um, worm. So please remember the pathogen stages. You've got egg stage, then it becomes more mature, it becomes larva, and then also it starts maturing again. And then you have your adult stage. So usually they ask you guys these stages and you have to identify what is the um, parasite based on this life cycle so yes fine we can see it kind of looks like a worm um, in this picture but that doesn't necessarily mean that it is a worm or it doesn't tell us what type of worm it is so it could be round we can later see the tapeworm it's a little bit different but look at the stages we see eggs we see larva we say see the adult um, so this basically tells us what's happening on the inside okay so then roundworm symptoms how can a farmer know whether he's um the livestock are infest, infested. Usually diarrhea goes along with it, weight loss because why the worm steals nutrients from the animal, anemia usually, especially if the worms do steal blood or affect the um, red blood cells of the animal. Then the conjunctiva of the sheep may be snowy white in color. The conjunctiva is part of the eye, the outside bit of the eye, and it kind of looks like the animal has gone blind. So it becomes whitish, um, the outside of the eye, usually around the iris or it's above the iris. So then they're also a little bit weaker because they've got less energy now. Rapid breathing, pneumonia, meaning their lungs are affected and they sometimes they cough. And they would be damaged to the mucus lining of the um, alimentary canal, and which can then cause inflammation, so meaning the intestines. So the intestines then would be inflamed because of the fact that these roundworms find they get into the stomach, but eventually they migrate to the intestines. So what can the farmer do to control this type of infestation? They can move the, uh, the uh, cattle or the livestock to clean pastures where um, the, the pasture is not contaminated and usually something like rotational grazing should, should be used. Meaning if the farmer has um, an idea or knows that one of the pastures are affected with worms or he notices that most of his cattle or whatever um, have worms because they they graze in a certain pasture then he has to rotate so meaning every couple of months he has to use a different pasture for his animals in that way the worms then will die out if they have no host in that pasture where they are then also adult sheep must be treated one month before and one month after lambing there's just a pre um, preventive measure pastures must be rested also for at least 10 weeks to reduce the number of infective larvae on the pasture. So when you raise it or rotational grazing, keep them off of that infected pasture for at least 10 weeks. Also avoid wet areas because that is where the worms like to breed. And some drugs they mentioned here, which you can use to um, dose the animals with um, against around worms. Um, you guys don't have to remember all these names, but the third one usually is what we have in South Africa, or specifically that they use the Eastern Cape is Ivermectin. So this is actually a common one that they usually sell at BKB and that they use. So Ivermectin will be the easy one to remember. So another internal parasite is liver flukes. So this one is very, very interesting. This is a, a complete zoom in of what the liver fluke looks like. They are actually very, very small. Here is a scale for you guys, a very small, I think this is a penny, but anyway, a small piece of coin, and they are just slightly larger than a coin. So basically, why it's called the liver fluke, the fluke refers to its shape and liver because it literally affects the liver of your animals, your livestock, in this case, a sheep. This is a trans section um, through uh, liver. So we can see the liver inside has been affected. This is our liver fluke, another one there. And it makes these giant lesions on the inside of the liver. So basically, slowly but surely, the liver is degrading and the tissue is becoming um, worn out. Okay, so then we have the life cycle of your liver fluke. So just by looking at the cycle, again, the telltale thing here that's, that can tell you this is the liver fluke is fine. The shape of the um, parasite they give you guys, but they will give you two hosts. Here we have a cow and here we have a snail, specifically the mud snail, because this um, type of parasite survives within water. So that's why it must be inside the mud snail. 
So as soon as you guys see a snail and something like a cow or a sheep, think liver fluke. So here we have the first host. Liver fluke is inside. Again, eggs are laying in the feces and it goes out through the feces, drops into uh, in between grass, but mainly close to a river area or a water body. Could be a, a, a lake or even a puddle. So then it goes into the water. The second stage is the myricidium stage. You don't have to be able to write down the word myricidium, but please recognize the word because sometimes they will ask you what uh, parasite has the stage called myricidium. So that would be your liver fluke. Okay, so then the myricidium then eventually swims towards the mud snail. It enters the mud snail, which happens to live inside the water. And then further on this um, parasite matures inside the mud snail, then eventually the next stage comes out of the um, snail called the cercaria. And then these can actually swim and they go to grass areas close to this puddle or lake or whatever onto the grass. And then your first host, in this case the cattle, will eat the grass and in that way ingest um, the parasite. So here we have the main host is the cattle, intermediate host is the water snail. So usually they talk not the second host, they, they call it the intermediate, so in between. So in between stages, in between hosts, this one, and your main host usually is something like cows or sheep. Okay, so the symptoms, how does the farmer know that um, animals have liver fluke? Uh, mainly it's, it obviously causes damage to the liver, but, but you won't really be able to see this from the outside. Adult flukes cause anemia, as you can see again if the animal keeps on bleeding and it can't heal itself because the blood is being affected. Toxins also released by um, bacterium in the wounds caused by migrating flukes may also lead to black disease or sudden death. Okay, again, uh, it's difficult for the farmer to see this from the outside, but definitely something like a post-mortem um, inspection will be able to see that the uh, liver has been affected, maybe the um, blood has also been affected. And also infested animals can get wasting disease with anemia. Anemia, you can tell again if the animal um, uh, bleeds and the wounds do not heal. But remember, wasting disease is when the animals become completely um, emaciated, they're very, very skinny and they, um, they lose weight, um, they lose muscle mass, and you can see the rib cage. So usually wasting disease can also be a telltale sign. A drop in milk production they mentioned there, especially also again, um, can, it can not just be milk, but it can also be the meat production. That's some diarrhea, mainly with most of these diseases, the animals will experience diarrhea because the body is trying to get rid of this internal parasite. And also they have a lack of ap appetite, weakness, and so on, emaciation basically goes back to wasting disease. And here we have a very, um, gross, I want to say, picture of what the liver looks like if it is also affected. Here we see these big lesions that the flukes have left and the entire tissue is being wasted away. Okay, so then how to control your liver flukes. He also mentioned a couple of um, chemicals or flucosides you can use here to dose the animal, but the easiest one for you guys to remember would be flucozole. So here we have a picture of flucozole that you can actually also get at PKB. So women products can also include injections or drenches. Drenches goes into the mouth. Injections you can also get, can inject into the skin or into the muscle, into the bloodstream. Then wet pastures must be avoided at all times. So the best way actually to help animals not get infected is to keep them away from wet areas. And this I mean constant wet areas, so wetland areas or areas that you know um, after big rain will keep the water or the water will stay above the soil for weeks on end. Okay, then we go into the next internal parasite, the tapeworm. So the tapeworm itself, ah, it's such a pretty face. Here is the mouth part that actually uh, attaches the animal to um, the intestine or it keeps, it latches onto the intestine of the, those cells of the host animal. And here we have the mouth area. So the hooks keeps it intact and the mouth areas is where all the um, nutrients are being stolen. So basically your tapeworms, they can be a couple of meters long because even our intestines and animal intestines are very, very long. So they can become endlessly long, just as long as the intestines. Here would be the head bit and that would be the tail bit. So as these sections of the um, tapeworm is called um, prochlotids and each prochlotid has eggs on the inside. That's why it becomes thicker to the tail end of the animal. So after a while, as soon as this prochlotid is mature and the eggs are ready to hatch, 
then this piece actually breaks off and then goes out into the feces. So the host animal then drops the feces and these protelets are on the inside and then the eggs can hatch on the outside. So here we have the life cycle as well. Again, this is just a simplified version that can give you guys another life cycle in the test. But mainly you have your host and the, the, the worm is on the inside and the intestine. Again, through the feces, basically, this is where um, these protetes are released. And then the eggs are released as well. And then in this case, you have an intermediate host again. In this case, it would be the flea. And the flea ingests your eggs. And as soon as this flea goes on to another host, it bites the host. Then the eggs can be, it goes out into the second host or the main host through the saliva. And so here we see a nice enlarged picture of what one of these protelets look like, or one of these segments, and the eggs are on the inside. So your tapeworm symptoms, so, shame, as you can see here in this dog, it definitely has tapeworms or worm infestation because it has a pot belly, enlarged belly. So also weight loss along with a um, pot belly, a retarded growth, so your young animals will struggle to grow um, well enough. Then usually the coat is rough and dry and in sheep there will be a poor wool production. Then these protelids, they kind of look like um, cooked rice, may appear in the feces of infected animals like we saw in the previous slide. Digestive disorders such as blocking of the intestine may cause constipation and in severe cases even death. And also diarrhea because the body is trying to get rid of this parasite and the moving segments, um, these protelids, can sometimes be seen crawling around the anus or in the feces of certain animals. Not a pretty sight to see. So how to can farmers control this parasite? Mainly through dosing, as you can see in the picture, with um, certain remedies, medication. Also prevent infection by resting pastures, we mentioned rotational grazing. Then also fencing off of infected areas or your wetland areas. If you can't drain the areas, the best way is to prevent the animals from actually going there. Then also breed animals that are resistant to worm infestation. This is a longer process, but usually you do find these individuals within a herd or a stud and you'll see that they are not at all affected by any of these worms. And then it's good if the farmer will select them and actually breed with them and try and to limit the amount of um, affected animals in the herd. So then just lastly, what mainly is the economic implications of these internal parasites, meaning how can this cause the loss of money for a farmer? Firstly, it causes tissue damage of the host animal. So meaning if the farmer wanted to sell his cattle for their meat, um, now again the animal will lose weight, so it will have a, a, um, a smaller weight mass. Um, which is then <clears throat> so the farmer will get less money for obviously per weight for the for the cattle or the sheep or whatever. Also poor production. Um, poor host condition, meaning of, again um, weight loss, high treatment costs. So if again, if the far, um, farmer sees that the animal is infected, he must medicate the animal. That costs money. The dewormers. Uh, if it's a large amount of your animals that do have it, it can become quite quite costly to deworm all of them. Then also labour intensive. If you need workers to help deworm these animals or to monitor them or to fence off certain areas, so a lot of money there. Then also livestock losses reduce the income for the farmer, makes sense. Loss of production of your wool, meat, milk, so on, which is bad. And then also high treatment costs. Okay, that's basically the same thing as the third bullet point. And yes, that's basically the lesson for your internal parasites. The next one will be about the external ones.